What's going on everyone? My name is Tom from Dread Labs and today we're going to dive into some client work. Dread Labs. Alright, so before we start with the video, I just want to let you know that you can get a lot of the project files from my tutorials by becoming a patron. Check out the link down in the description or stick around until the end of the video to learn more. So a couple of weeks ago, I released a video going over some of my works from the past five years. And one of my most recent jobs is an album cover and animation that I did for Alex Black. I asked him if he was cool with me doing a breakdown of the project and he was completely fine with it and I also got some requests about it in the comments so here we are. So Alex reached out to me by the beginning of January somewhere and he asked me to do an album cover for him. He already had a mood board ready with some ideas of his and the cool part about this mood board is that he had some of the words that I already did myself as well as some references from other people. So we hopped on a call to discuss the project and eventually I came up with the idea to have a head hooked up to like some tubing and have a gas mask on in order to establish a cyberpunk aesthetic in the whole artwork and animation. He also sent over the complete lyrics for the song, a couple of parts of the lyrics that he really liked, as well as the name of the mastering and mixing engineers so we had some additional text content to put on the cover. So once the down payment was done I got to designing and let me just break down what I did for this project. Alright so we're here in Cinema 4D with the um, main part of the album cover as I said. Let's just change and zoom out a little bit so you can see what's going on here. So essentially what we have is a couple of 3D models uh, and I found these online and I just combined them. Uh, and what I mean by that is the main part, the mask, as well as the head. Um, I did the tubing myself. I modeled the like adapters here and the tubing is actually done in a pretty nifty way, I think. So let me just make the head invisible as well as the mask. So we have the adapters, let me just make those invisible as well. So under the tubes, uh, I'll just move the symmetry. So I just have one. So essentially what's going on here is we have a loft consisting of a couple of circles. And what the loft basically does is it just makes a shape between three different 2D shapes. So we have two larger circles at both ends and in the middle we have a smaller circle. That's what basically the loft does. As you can see, you can slightly see the circles here. So what we did with that was we put it in the cloner and have it clone up like vertically. So we get a giant tube as you can see. We then use a spline wrap to wrap that around our helix here, as you can see here. Uh, essentially, you know, making twisting tubes and we deform those with two bend deformers to have them like wrap a little bit around the, uh, the head here. So the upside of using 3D artworks instead of like using stock photos or whatever is that it's very easy to do animation uh, when it comes to 3D. So essentially Alex also wanted to have some animations for a lyric video and some social media assets and essentially that's a good thing for us as well because that gives us more work. What I simply did here is I added a camera and I hooked it up to a larger circle, as you can see here. And what I did is I just made an animation rotating the camera around the whole object like this. So essentially I animated a couple of parts from the cover so that we have a moving animated album cover compared to our still that we use. Alright, so in Illustrator this is basically uh, the layout. I always do my layers in Illustrator because it just uh, is very easy to uh, determine where different parts of the uh, composition should be. Uh, if you want to learn more about this, I recently released a video making a ray flyer where I talk a little bit about composition and why I use Illustrator instead of Photoshop when you know making a composition like this. I knew at an early stage that this album cover would be animated so I made sure to add in a couple of things that I already knew how to animate. A couple of examples of these are the moving arrows over here and the waveform here at the bottom. So what's included as well is a couple of shapes from the Dread Shapes packages such as the tribal shape over here. And the two fonts, this one is called Metro Juice and it's by Legendropy Designs. And this one is called UB Norma by Normalist. And both of these fonts and that shape can be found on dreadlabs.net. I'll put a link down in the description. The reason that I use assets when it comes to like vector arrangement is that it just helps you work a lot faster and you can always replace them with some custom shapes afterwards. All right, so I made two versions and the main difference is the colorway as you can see here. This is an unused version and this is the final version. Alex eventually went with this one and it's also my personal favorite, I think. Essentially, I have a couple of textures here, such as a general noise texture made in Photoshop, a film grain texture by Aram Preston, and a Grinch texture by Black Market. As you can see, this is what a clean version looks like. So when I know I have to animate something, I usually keep my Illustrator, Photoshop, and After Effects document in the exact same size. 
In this case, it's a cover art and I usually work in a 3000 by 3000 pixel canvas for that and a different DPI depending on whether it's gonna be printed or not. So as you can see in this full animated content part, I just have a width and height of 3000 by 3000 pixels. And when I start exporting it, I just scale the composition down in another composition, if that makes sense. So the reason I do this is that I know the exact position of a couple of different elements within the composition of your uh, animation. Let me give you an example of this because this sounds kind of complicated. Let's take a look at this rotating star here, for example. In order to have this thing rotate separately, I have to export it separately out of Illustrator or Photoshop. So over here, we can see, let's just press P for the position. That the position is 325 by 9005. And the way that I know this is basically because I can select it here in Illustrator, go to the property and see the position over here. And as you can see, compared to After Effects, this has a lot of decimals behind it. So I rounded it up uh, when importing it into After Effects. But in order to just know the exact place of something uh, when we're exporting separate assets, I just click on whatever it is. Uh, check out what the X and Y coordinates are and then go into After Effects and press in those coordinates. I do something similar with the textures. Essentially what I do is I just remove the blend mode. So for example, this one's set on screen. I just move that to normal, export it, and then I put the blend mode back once imported in After Effects. So that's essentially a quick breakdown of the artwork and the animation that I did for Alex Black. I hope this was insightful in some way or another. And feel free to ask me some follow-up questions down in the comments. Or if you want to see more videos like this, let me know as well. So before we end of the video, I just wanted to give a quick shout out to all of my patrons. Thanks to my patrons, I'm actually able to do Dreadlabs full time and give you guys a free video every week. As a thank you, my patrons got access to all of the project files from all of my tutorials, a 15% discount in my asset web store, as well as an exclusive Discord role. If you go one tier up, you'll also get access to exclusive content such as how to make a death metal logo from scratch, as well as even more project files. So if you want to become a patron, there's a link down in the description. And if you don't have the budget to support Dread Labs in that way, don't worry because subscribing, leaving a like and a comment already does a lot. That being said, this was Tom from Dread Labs tuning out. Thank you so much for watching and I'll hopefully see you guys in the next video.